you've got two you've got two inefficient energy systems batteries and power grids don't work that well and fiat banks and monetary grids don't work that well and bitcoin plus lightning gives you a battery to store all the world's energy forever without power loss and the other day i sent a thousand sats on the lightning network and in one second for one sat so you know literally you've got speed of light nearly you know what is the cost of one sat right if it is such an infinitesimally small number mm -hmm. a fraction of a fraction of a penny that so bitcoin's a very efficient energy system um I think that uh, the significance here is that Bitcoin is, dis is disruptive technology for the entire energy market and it's co-opting the energy producers and energy investors into Bitcoin. Mm. What you see right now is you see a lot of, um, you see a lot of uh, traditional power companies that used to be in the energy business, they're getting into Bitcoin mining. People with natural gas, people in the nuclear energy in industry people in the wind and solar industry they're getting into bitcoin mining or they're partnering with bitcoin mines so bitcoin recruited energy capital and bitcoin secures the network with energy capital hundreds and hundreds of of producers of energy are plugged in the bitcoin network creating that hash wall so that's the first layer of security for bitcoin and if you're going to attack it, you know, it's no small feat to go and, and collect that much energy. You almost can't, you can, you're not going to collect twice as much energy or as much energy as is currently in the Bitcoin mining network, politically, economically, practically. I just don't know how you would do it. So the, the second layer though is technology. And this I don't think people really understand that well. And when I talk about technology, I'm referring to the to Bitcoin ASIC miners. You know, Bitcoin is a wall of encrypted energy. So the energy is the first part, but the encrypting, the, and the encryption, the crypto is the second part, the crypto wall of energy. It's not raw energy. If it was raw energy, you just need 100 terawatt hours to start to get parity. But when it's encrypted energy, I need I need uh, 100 exahash of SHA-256 mining equipment. And since it's like 10,000 miners, right, to get to an exahash right now. <laughs> okay, then that's a hundred, that's a million, a million mining rigs of the latest build. How do you come up with a million mining rigs? You know, it's like, it's not, no one's got a million mining rigs sitting around. I mean, it's not clear how long it would take to manufacture a million mining rigs. Bitcoin's co-opting technology companies. So Bit, you know, Bitmain is a big player, but but there are other big players too. And, and as Bitcoin gets larger, I think you'll see the Intels of the world and you'll see, you know, you'll see other semiconductor companies designing Bitcoin mining rigs and mm -hmm. getting into space. So energy and technology are, are a key part of the equation, but they're not the only part of the equation because if I want to generate hashes, I have to set up a Bitcoin mining facility. There's physical nexus. I have to do it in Iceland or El Salvador or Canada or Texas. And I, you know, you, you could probably run your stake validator on a secret machine in your basement but you can't run a you know 150 megawatt facility on a secret license you need the support of the mayor the county the governor you know you could look at this as a negative it isn't it's a positive what it means is that bitcoin miners are knocking on doors everywhere in the universe and they're looking for supportive political jurisdictions you know, if New York City doesn't want to mine Bitcoin, maybe Texas does. Maybe Florida does, maybe Wyoming does. Right? And so if China doesn't, well, then maybe Kazakhstan does. In fact, the more irrational one country is, the more appealing Bitcoin mining is to the others, right? 
When China actually cracked down on Bitcoin mining, the revenues of Bitcoin miners doubled. The profits quadrupled. And the incentive to get in the mining business jumped. And uh, so what you have is an interesting dynamic where Bitcoin miners partner with energy companies and they partner with technology companies, but they also partner with political jurisdictions and politicians. And this is an interesting situation too, because this is so Darwinian. Um, what happens if you're a Bitcoin miner and you set up a billion dollar Bitcoin mining rig in New York City and then there's a new mayor and he outlaws Bitcoin mining? What happens to your capital? <laughs> Can't move it, right? So Bitcoin miners have skin in the game. And because they have skin in the game, that means that they have to do their due diligence and they've got a long time horizon. A person that's mining Bitcoin is um, is looking out five years, looking out 10. You, you kind of want to be in a jurisdiction where you think that a decade from now, you'll still be able to mine Bitcoin. And so it forces you uh, to be more thoughtful. You know, and the next step is, well, I just invested hundreds of millions of dollars in this county. I guess I probably better contribute to the county election and get the county, the mayor elected, right? You put down roots because you have a vested interest, because you have something to lose. So the Bitcoin mining network actually becomes a political lobbying network for Bitcoin. So all the, yeah, all the money that flows into creating mining centers creates jobs, creates tax revenue, supports politicians, you know, creates massive revenues for engineering companies, for, uh, for real estate companies, for landlords, you know, etc. It's good for the local economy. Bitcoin brings prosperity anywhere on earth. Thank you.